fly by. There's a lot of uh, underwater photo and video gear out there and uh, information. And I've checked it all out and spent a lot of time before I made the decision to buy the Olympus 2G5. Now, what you see on this camera here, what helped me make that decision is uh, they call it a lens or they call it an accessory for the camera, which is actually a wide angle lens that fits the lens adapter here. And what's really great about this lens is it's waterproof along with the camera to 49 feet, okay? And it takes great pictures, like you can go from wide angle and focus down on little teeny objects like that. It keeps them right in there, shows all the detail, you can't beat it. Now, I've taken some uh, video with this camera and some videos I've posted on my site here where I'm walking the reef at night. So it's a really great uh, combination here. Now, if you want to go deeper than 49 feet, well, you take the wide angle off and then we have the Olympus TG5 itself. And we have a 25 millimeter lens to 111, which is really wide angle. And then there's a lot of camera housings, companies that make housings for this camera. And the reason you have so many companies say, well, let's make a housing for this camera is because it's got so many attributes and characteristics. You can go from uh, down there, you can go from wide angle to close-ups to magnification, 401k. It's got all kinds of modes you can go to. I haven't used them all, but I've used a few of them. And so there's one other attribute we'll get into about this camera too that gave me a decision to buy it. Now, uh, if you're going to go down and you want a housing, like I say, a lot of housings were made for this uh, uh, camera because of the attributes. Now, behind me, you see an Icolite housing. That was bought 50 years ago, and they're still in business making housings. They make a housing. Olympus, I think they make a housing, at least their name's on the housing. And uh, Seafrog makes a housing. You can buy a Seafrog housing in all kinds of colors, green, yellow, blue. And uh, I chose uh, this particular uh, housing sea frog housing because it goes to 195 feet and also I've used uh, I use four sea frog lights and uh, I've taken them way below uh, what the manufacturer recommended depth and no leaks and stuff so that's why I decided on this particular sea frog housing because I never know when I'm going to drop down to 180 200 feet and take some video and I want that ability and then I bought the corrective dome on here. I looked at the Seafrog video on it and I've made my own video because I went ahead and tested it after looking at their video to make sure it really gave me a full wide angle of the 25 millimeters and it did. So this is all really great gear here. I've been using it. Uh, most of my videos, I posted some underwater videos that I made on my last trip to the Philippines using this gear here. It really works out great. Now what prompted me to buy this gear is I've been using the uh, action camera go mask here and of course with the go mask uh, the monitor don't matter because your goes where your head is but if you move your head fast not good for your video so then I went to uh, another smaller camera here the X2 on my lighting and camera platform this small viewfinder man with monitor trying to you know, put together my video keep everything in the frame really a job as I've got to find something better and so that's why I come up with this large monitor here okay let's compare it to the action camera monitor it's as big as a whole action camera so the number one aspect of video or photography is conforming putting together formatting your video or your picture and the larger the monitor the better it is the better chances you have of going ahead and formatting a picture. If your girlfriend's moving around and you want to get a background, well, the bigger the monitor, the better. If you're underwater and if you're floating around, you're trying to format it, the bigger the monitor, the better. So that's a real important aspect, and that's what got me here. Now, uh, I got some videos showing this monitor in action. Uh, they're real short. Then we'll get on to some other videos. And so... It's uh, the video is from uh, looking the the um, action camera, looking at the uh, sea frog housing. So let's look a quick a quick look at that video. I got some other uh, short videos I'll show you that uh, you may find it interesting, informative, and in making a decision.
corrective dome port off the sea frog housing now uh before i bought this dome port i went to the sea frog uh, website looked at the video they have here of it and it took and i took my computer a monitor put post-it stickers on it played it back and forth and it looked okay it looks like it's working and all then i seen them take it off like this and so forth and well it's full of water wet dome so i thought maybe there's some optical uh, features ground into this dome. I didn't know. I had some catching up to do. I mean, uh, the housing back there, I built that 50 years ago, set up the dome for the, to the focal point of the 24 millimeter wide angle lens. Took a lot of great pictures, got some published. So anyway, so this thing gets shipped to me, when it comes to me, I go, wow, look at that. That's neat. Now I see what they're doing. Anyway, it's got, uh, if you can see in here, it's got a glass lens in there. Whether it has optical properties or not, I don't know. Then between the lens and the dome is some air. Maybe it's argon, nitrogen, or maybe just good dry air. Inert gas, in other words. So uh, I'm looking at it, and then uh, the space here is about, oh, 5 eighths, maybe 16 millimeters between the glass and where it, may, where it makes contact with the housing. Once it makes contact with the housing, it's probably a half inch uh, section of water right there that you're looking through, or it's the uh, videos coming through or stills so anyway this thing's really interesting but the first thing I wonder is how good is it how does it work so I want to get this out to the spring and test it so I'll show you we'll look at some videos where I test it I'll show you uh, the equipment I set up for testing it let's take a look at that so I want to go ahead and test the um, sea frog dome for myself so I put together this uh, platform for the camera I use the lights on it too and uh it's got two tripods here that I mounted on here. They have uh, stainless steel fasteners I made for them. And I took this, and this is made so it'll sit on the bottom, um, video in the scene without any movement. And then I can swim down there, take the dome off, and you'll see uh, dome on, dome off. Let's take a look at, I did this because I want to test it myself to see how well it works. Let's take a look at those videos. As soon as I received this photo gear, I went out and did that test, and I was really happy with the performance. And um, the first part of the test, I put it so it, you could toggle back and forth to, to the two different scenes, on and off. And then the second one, I showed you to make it official, I take the dome off. You know. So uh, I know a little bit about this dome correction, but I'm going to show a, put a website up here for you to go to. And when you go to that, it's a fantastic website. This lady tells you everything you want to know. Then, after, the, after I flash that up there, I'm going to get to what I didn't know when I found out about this dome correction. Boy, she really puts a great website to go to there. And I don't know if you looked at it or not, but anyway. In her first uh, paragraph and first diagram tells it all. She shows where different uh, light coming in with all the different spectrums from uh, uh, red to yellow to blue, green. Anyway, as they come in and hit a flat port, they all bend at a different angle. And red bends the, the smallest amount of angle and blue bends at the greatest angle. Now, I, they may have something to do with uh, this flat port where I took some video, oh, about a year and a half ago of a reef in the Philippines. And it had some bright staghorn blue coral. I videoed it, and I got back, took the SD card, looked at it, and it wasn't what I seen. It just didn't come out at me. Then I was back there a year later, using this one, well, the last couple months back. I photo videoed that blue coral, and when I looked at it, well, oh, wow, look how great it comes out. I'm really seeing kind of what I saw in the dive. So uh, I've got this video. It's not real scientific. It's some video I took a year and a half. Their cameras aren't side by side and everything like that. 
but it's something I took a year and a half ago. And then what I just took, and I'm going to compare some of that same reef and some of that same coral. And uh, you'll see the color. At the last part of the one video with the, with the sea frog and the corrective dome, you'll see that bright blue coming out at you. So let's take a look at it. Well, we'll end it now. Uh, I have some more information that I found out using the sea frog housing and uh, the corrective dome and some other things that took me a while to figure out about the sea frog. It's really great information. Some of it's really important information. So until I do that video, if you found this interesting and informative, please subscribe.